There's no getting around the fact that this poor old 1873 house sewing machine is a disaster. It has broken parts, is missing parts, the nickel plating on several pieces is completely worn away, and the underlying brass heavily tarnished. Worse still, every single moving piece is locked up tight with rust. But the greatest tragedy is that sometime in its past, a highly corrosive compound spilled onto the machine's bed, eating the Japan finish down to the bare metal. What makes this an even greater loss is this was originally a very high-end machine because it featured the most difficult and costly of all bed decorations, inlaid mother of pearl. Of the 26 pieces applied almost 150 years ago, only five were left and they fell off shortly after unpacking. By all rights, this machine is a complete loss. It's in such poor condition, it has no collectible value and is of little use even for spare parts. And here's what she looks like after 130 hours of restoration. Broken and missing parts were repaired and replaced. The brass plates cleaned and replated. All metalwork was polished to a mirror finish. Moving parts were disassembled and all sliding and rotating surfaces honed and reassembled. The japanning on the vertical and horizontal arms was in good condition, so it was merely cleaned and polished. The bed was re-japanned with real mother-of-pearl inlays. These aren't the commonly available paper-thin veneers, but full thickness awabi mother-of-pearl feathers imported all the way from Australia. Twice as many were ordered than needed. The brightest of those selected and the replacement pieces cut from the areas on each feather showing the best rolling color. Finally, the artwork was recreated from pictures obtained online to be as historically accurate as possible. These aren't decals, but 24 karat gold leaf applied directly to the machine by hand. After adding enamel embellishments, the entire machine was given a protective coat of shellac, just as it would have been almost 150 years ago. It's being shown here on its display base, which makes it convenient for hand crank use and transportation to shows. But it's mounted on a treadle where she really shines because all of her bulky drive mechanisms, including the main wheel, are located below the bed and out of sight. This gives her an elegantly graceful appearance. And now, for the first time in perhaps as much as 100 years, she sews her very first stitches. One of the interesting aspects of any restoration is the discovery of unexpected surprises. For example, in addition to having the serial number stamped into the rear shuttle cover plate, it's also stamped into the main body of the machine beneath the front shuttle cover. The style and quality of the artwork on the bed is so superior to what's on the vertical and horizontal arms that it suggests two different people painted her, perhaps the apprentice doing the simpler upper parts and the master the more important bed. Finally, a close examination of the medallion showing Howe's image discloses the name S. Ellis SC, most likely the sculptor who created the original and his home state of South Carolina. I hope you enjoyed this before and after look at this Stockwell Howell Model A sewing machine. I'm going to be following it up soon with a video showing how to sew with it, as well as use some of the Howe made attachments that came with it. Until it's uploaded, I hope you'll stop by my main website at waynesthisandat.com where you can see all of the other machines in our collection. And once again, thank you for watching.